Thank you, Bob. I always look at Joan or Becca to know how I'll look at the podium as a shorter person. <laughs> Thank you. Before I, I focus on uh, my remarks at hand and my wonderful introduction, um, I wanted to give special recognition to someone who I did ask if it was okay if I mentioned her, but I don't think she thought I would actually do it. But I did want to take a moment to recognize Emerge alum Emily Krasnow. Um, some of you may know she actually buried her mother yesterday, and she's still present for this event. Susan Krasnow, her mother, was a special educator for over 40 years, and she delighted in knowing her daughter would be sworn into the legislature in January to fight for those who are underrepresented. And that's what Emerge is all about. So I wanted to recognize you. Speaking of those who are underrepresented, I was able to offer remarks at the portrait unveiling of Alexander Twilight in the State House this past spring. That portrait is the first of a person of color to permanently reside in the State House. Of 86 permanent State House portraits, there are two of white women and none of women of color. Now, don't get me wrong, for many of us, the portrait of Governor Madeline Cunin is something we look at daily to remind us we belong in the halls of power. <laughs> I know, I certainly do. But when I got to the legislature in 2009 as only the second woman of color in history to serve, I had to dig deep to find any trace or recognition of Luvenia Dorsey Bright, the first black woman and the first woman of color to serve. I want us to take a moment to let this sink in. Though often noted as white passing, Alexander Twilight was elected in 1836 when the legislature was newly established. Luvenia Bright was elected in 1988, 152 years later. 20 years after that, I would be elected. Then came Kaya Morris and Deanna Gonzalez. Currently, I am the first and only woman of color in the state senate, and Ray Garifano is the only woman of color in the house, and she's also an alum and here tonight. I say all of this because we must do better, and with the help of Emerge and so many of you, we are poised to do better. 43% of our alums on the August primary ballot were women of color. And when we elect Lauren Dees Erickson, Leonora Dodge, Saudia Lamont, Nakuma Polchowski, and Mary Catherine Stone to the legislature this November, <laughs> when we elect them, there will be more women of color serving in one session than have served in all of Vermont history. That is more representative democracy for all of us and one that further bends the arc of the moral universe toward justice. Lauren Dees Erickson is a working mother and if you wanna be humble, just bring your daughter to an event who's sitting there saying, mom, don't be nervous and not even clapping for her when she gets her flowers. <laughs> Lauren is the vice chair of her planning commission, a rotary member, a United Way board member and an international development expert. She is running in St. Albans after years of speaking truth to power. She is unbought, unbossed, and unafraid, and she is on track to make history. When she hasn't been given a seat at the table, she has brought a folding chair and opened the door to let others into the room. If you've made a donation to Lauren, and if you haven't, you should, then you know that her thank you card quotes the great Leslie Nope, right, Elaine, the great Leslie Nope. It reads, no one achieves anything alone. We know this in Emerge, and that has yielded the beautiful sisterhood we've had for nine years now in our Vermont chapter. But we have to take this further for women of color. We must recognize that we collectively achieve nothing unless we lift up the voices of black women in the process.
that is our work because it's not enough for Lauren to win. This must be a victory for all of us and we must support her when she leads with courage and conviction as she most certainly will in the legislature in January. Esteemed guests, I give you Lauren Dees Erickson, the next state representative from St. Albans and the future of Vermont.